Here at Taronga Wildlife Hospital, we look after dozens of injured marine turtles every year. So the majority of the injuries that we do see is obviously in gestation of plastics, fishing line, things like that. Hi, right, buddy. How are you going? Yeah, so this little guy here, he was found at um, Tamarama Beach. And um, they just found him in the rock pools there. Um, he was just on his back. You can notice that his back right flipper is pretty much, you can't see it from the back, so it's been chomped. And you'll also notice that the left flipper has a little bit of a chip out of it as well, and a little bit on the back, very bottom of his shell. So it's like something's come up and just gone hunk onto the back of his um, shell and taken that flipper and a little bit. But as he gets older, you will not even be able to notice that the, there were bites on the back of his um, shell and he will be totally fine with those three flippers. And the other one, it is there, but it just doesn't have the curve on it. So he'll be absolutely fine out in the wild when he grows up. So he was in, you know, fairly good physical condition, apart from, you know, having a little bit of dried blood and stuff on the shell and a little bit on his flipper. Um, but then when he started to defecate, he defecated six days of plastic. For, so for a little turtle this size, every single day, no faeces came out, just pure plastic. Um, so we do have a lot of the, we have all of the plastic, we collected it and counted how many days. Um, and we came up with six tiny vials full of all different sizes of plastics. So, you know, this guy I would say was lucky because some of the plastic that did come out was really hard. Um, so that could have caused an obstruction. This guy, I'd just say luck was on his side and he excreted all of it out. So we're really lucky with that. Um, now he's eating really, really well, defecating, no more plastics. Um, so yeah, so that's really good. To give him the best chance of life, we will keep him here for uh, quite a while um, and grow him up so that when he is released, he's got a little bit, he's got much more of a chance than being just fish food. <laughs> So when he first came in too, his shell was really soft. Now as he's getting older, it's really starting to harden up, which is a great thing. So that's also why they're so easy, they, they easily get munched and stuff and, and their shell comes off so easy because it is very soft and rubbery like. So anything with very sharp teeth or something can easily go through their shell when they're young because it is still quite soft. But his is hardening up very nicely and that's what we want to see. So we weigh him every day so that we can then adjust the food intake that he takes in that day. So we won't, don't want to feed him just whatever because then he could get very, very fat and overeat. Um, so we basically just keep them um, so that they're, you know, like a fit athlete and that they don't eat, get too much food, um, just enough food to keep him going and growing strongly. Yeah, so this guy did turn up after a large swell and at that the particular time of the year that this guy turned up, sometimes we do get a lot of hatchlings that come in. This little guy, he was just that little bit bigger than the little, little hatchlings we get and I feel that we, because he was just that little bit more older, he was more, had more of a chance of survival. The other little, real little guys that we get, sometimes they're doing fine and then they just die. So this guy, you know, had, had um, you know, size on his side, so to speak, um, and yeah, just seems to be thriving. Even though they are a wild animal, they do give you kind of something back and, and watching them grow and, and they're just such a intricate animal to, to have here anyway. You know, they're very specialised, you know, having to give them salt water and have them in salt water and just to be able to balance what nutritional needs they need and all that kind of stuff so that he does grow up um, a very healthy, um, green turtle. Yeah, so we feed him twice a day. So the first thing we do in the mornings is we come in, we turn on this UV lamp. So this is a UV lamp. So they need the UV lamp um, to, to be able to, like their shell is keratin, they need the UV uh, sunlight to be able to grow naturally and, and give their shell a hardening rather than it getting really soft. So we have this on over a couple of hours during the day and then we turn it off at a, of a night time. So in the mornings we come in, turn the light on, we actually put a thermometer in the water, test the water temperature. We want him to be at about 24, 25 degrees. Um, and then we give the tank a clean, scoop it out, and then we feed him, and he loves his food. So in the mornings, we give him a um, in-house made, what we call turtle gel, which has all the vitamins and minerals and stuff that he needs that he can't get out of the frozen fish. And then in the afternoon, we give him some chopped up pilchard, um, and that kind of keeps him, you know, it's got a lot of oils and fats in it and stuff like that. So that gives him the bulk um, for him as he grows. 
So unfortunately, uh, when we do get these marine turtles in, we do have to um, care for them for quite often, you know, anywhere from two to six months. Sometimes even when they're hatchlings, we've had them for two years. Because when we release them back out into the wild, we want them to have the best advantage that they possibly can. So we really need to make sure that they're fit, healthy, and also a large enough size to be able to, um, you know, survive out there.